This is a DS Lite that's been modified with the TV out board and firmware. I've also wired up power, so if I hit the button, it powers on the console. This was a discovery made by the Lost Nintendo History team. It's a board developed by Nighthack, and it's put inside of a case that I designed. The top button here will swap the screens. It also swaps which screen is being displayed, which I'll show in a second. The third button enables a picture-in-picture -picture mode. The second button shows the opacity, or changes the opacity for the picture-in-picture -picture mode. And that fourth button, as I've already shown, is for powering the console on. Uh, it, overview of the box itself, it's got ventilation on the top and side so that the board itself doesn't overheat. Uh, it's got four screws and it's screwed down with a lid. Uh, the output here is a ribbon cable to the top screen display. I'm not actually going to show the board and this is a power switch for the DAC so it doesn't drain your battery. And the big thing about this board, if I go here, oh there it is, oh, I, was, I was so scared for a second. It outputs video in real time. The benefit of this is that it only cost me around $35 to produce the board myself. Compared to a lot of other capture methods, that's fairly cheap. Um, Pre-installed DS capture cards cost anywhere between $200 to $300. If you install them yourself, they're, uh, they're cheaper. I think it's like $80 for the board, but at the current time of recording this video, they are all sold out and Luke is the only one who still produces them. So this is a good alternative. Uh, another huge benefit to this compared to the capture card is there is no software or firmware required to run on your device. This could output directly to a TV. Uh, in this case, I'm outputting it to an AV to HDMI converter and taking it into my capture card. Uh, I think that's the general overview done. I do want to make some other comparisons to other consoles. Like for, for instance, uh, for Game Boy Advance capture, again, this is still cheaper if all you want to do is Game Boy Advance capture. Um, right now, Game Boy Advances are anywhere between 60 and 90, and the SPs are even more. And then you have to mod it on top of that. And most video mod kits are anywhere from 60 to $100 at the moment. So with this being around $100 to develop, it's not a bad idea. Uh, one of the biggest downsides to this right now is that the board itself takes a lot of precise micro soldering. Uh, and I have the skills to do that, but a lot of people don't. So you, it wouldn't be an easy mod unless this unit were pre-built. But if the unit were pre-built, it would have to be, it would increase the cost because it has to be pre-built. Obviously, it's also kind of flimsy. I'm working on that design. I'm trying to figure out a way to make it less flimsy. But if you just lay it flat, it doesn't really matter because it lays flat anyways. And I think that this is perfect for shiny hunting. Like that's what I'm going to use them for. It is a little bit awkward, which is another one of the downsides compared to certain other capture methods with this here. But I'll get into some future talk about that here in a minute. But yeah, all the buttons still work. Uh, you can still play it pretty well normally. I need to show that a little better. Uh, but now I, I think I should get into some of the downsides. Um, compared to like a DS or 3DS capture card, you do remove the entire top screen and uh, essentially take that input elsewhere. So because of that, you lose your speakers, you lose your microphone functionality, as well as wireless functionality. But those can all theoretically be at batted at, added back, excuse me. Um, this is a custom faceplate I've been working on. It has a microphone slot, it has a slot for the speaker. And then I don't need to re-add the wireless mo mode because you can either reroute the normal one, which is kind of hard, or just steal one of these. Uh, this is a smaller version of it that came out of a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con and it actually does work. Uh, the quality is not as good, but it does work for trading and picto chat and battling and anything else you might need to do. It might become an issue for games like Mario Kart where you're actively racing against other people, but I haven't adequately tested that yet. So we, I'd have to find out if this one works well for that. Um, so in theory, a lot of those things can be worked around still. But at the end of the day, if you want to preserve Wi-Fi and microphone functionality, which are both DS functionalities, I'd still recommend going for the 3DS capture card, which at the moment is $120 if you do it yourself, and I think $150 if you ship it in. So it's, it's a significant price hike because you also have the price of the console, but you're preserving the microphone and wireless functionality for recording DS gameplay. 
as well as being able to record 3ds gameplay because again the wireless and microphone aren't used for the gba games so there's no reason to really preserve it if that's one of your main goals and why i'd say if you need a lot of microphone and wireless functionality to go with a 3ds capture card instead of something like this but again that, that's a pretty big price hike considering uh, new 3ds xls are roughly 250 to 300 right now plus the additional almost 200 dollars on top of that for the capture card install and obviously for them pre uh for pre-installed ones on like ebay they have a lot as well as they have that downside of the driver issue um another issue with this one is if you want to install this you have to buy an r4 but r4s are pretty cheap and it does require some uh you have to monkey with it you have to boot custom firmware onto it and then uh run a program on your computer and stuff so it, there's a little it, it, it's a process to get this working but once you get it working it's pretty cheap <clears throat> sorry i i need to do that i'm trying to remember i have kind of a script here i'm trying to go into it as i go i think that's pretty much it Is everything about this i don't know oh i haven't had the volume on the volume works as well uh unfortunately the volume on this unit doesn't work well i tried to mod it differently and uh, the mod got rid of one of the channels of audio because I originally modded this for the Rotronics board. So I'm going to have to swap the motherboard out of it. Uh, the digitizer also would still work with this mod. There's no reason it wouldn't. I just happened to break my digitizer, unfortunately. So unfortunately, my digitizer, I need to either order another one or do something. This bottom screen also has dead pixels. So I may just order a new screen and digitizer for it. Um, but I remember what I was going to talk about. Let me grab something real quick. If I want to talk about the future of this mod, let me go back to this. There's no reason to stay on this one because I actually need to show you guys something because what we could do is try and shrink down the board. In fact, I have the regular board around here somewhere. Let me show you the board that's actually in it. Um, where is it? Where does that board go? I know I have it around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I apologize for the wait. But um, this is the board that's in it. This is obviously an unpopulated one, but you can see kind of by the size that that's the one that's in it. Um, it doesn't have the RCA ports because I've wired it out to a headphone jack. And then the buttons are actually wired to these guys right here. So rather than putting the tactile switches here, I've just pushed those buttons through the top and wired them up. Um, but you can actually see what, what I was going with is we could attempt to shrink the board down into uh, a smaller form factor like this one. Uh, this was the Rotronics board. Unfortunately, mine is broken at the moment. I need to replace the amp on it. I replaced the DAC already because I shorted them out while doing something with it, but that's not important. The idea is we could try and shrink it down and then this and try and get it inside the case, which would be ideal. Uh, the reason that we'd have to do that is because this board is no longer in production. Uh, Rotronics went MIA. He's no longer active on any of social medias or his website. You can't buy him. They're out of stock on his website. He wouldn't even fulfill items more recently. So these are no longer in production. Uh, none of the files are available on the internet. So we'd have to essentially re-shrink the board down to a smaller form factor. And that'd be a lot of work, more work than I'd want to do. But there are a couple other options that I was thinking about. Um, the first would be adding a controller. Now we could do, well, first of all, I guess there is already one controller mod you can do. Uh, I don't remember who makes it, but there is a Bluetooth in quotation marks, um, Bluetooth mod that allows you to control your console with another console. So you could mod this console with a receiver and then mod the other one with a sender with like the game slot. And it, it allows you to control a, one DS light with another DS light. But I think total that's like, 50 to 70 dollars to get both of them plus you have to have an additional console on top of it to control it so it's not a real feasible option unless you really need it uh, the one benefit of that is it does allow you to multi-hunt so one console can send to multiple receivers and you could do it to like double hunt or quad hunt so for shiny hunting it would make more sense but for casual gameplay you want a normal controller and i i initially started prototyping uh, let me actually grab something again because I'm just going into more detail and talking with rather than other stuff. Because I was playing around with these guys. 
this is just a, a USB-C breakout board because what I initially thought about doing was wiring all of your controller inputs to a USB device, and this was just kind of to play with it. But I don't think that's going to work anymore. Uh, I don't think there's enough lanes because you have like 12 buttons and there's not enough lanes of pure data transmission to have just button presses because these do different things each. So we can't actually use them like that, unfortunately. But I also, what, the easiest way to do it, but the, also the most expensive would be to wire all of your individual pins for buttons to a custom connector and then wire that custom connector to a custom controller. But that's a lot of work. It has been done before. And if I were editing this video, I'd show you, but you can look it up. Uh, there's a couple of people who literally wired a custom like NES controller through the GBA slot and a couple other things. But I want this to be more like that would be a lot of work. It'd be expensive. And I want this to be more streamlined. So my current option that I'm working with, I don't have it with me. Uh, it's going to be an Arduino. I found some open source code that allows an Arduino to connect with any HID compliant controller. So Wii controller, Switch controller, PS3 controller. I don't remember if PS4 is on that list, but there's a bunch of them. So in theory, if I can wire the Arduino to the DS Lite and then have any of those controllers connected, that's my ideal scenario. And that's kind of where my thinking process is going in the future, at least in terms of controller support, which I think would be viable because then I don't need to do this and have it be awkward. I can just hold my controller and keep playing it like this with the screen being displayed on like a monitor or something. Uh, you do still need to look at the bottom screen occasionally, which is I forgot to mention that is the biggest downside to this mod, unfortunately, is it only outputs one screen at a time. So for some games like Pokemon, it's not a huge deal. For others, it makes it's a bigger deal. In theory, can we output the bottom screen with a similar system? Potentially, uh, you can't output both of them through the same cable. So you would actually need another unit like this to output the bottom screen. But it has been theorized. There are a couple people who actually made their own consoleizers. Uh, unfortunately, the Rotronics was working on a like consoleizer kit for it, but he again dropped off. There was another company that made one. They had a working prototype. They were planning on releasing it last year, but that never happened. And my guess is part of that is cost. Um, the cost of a consoleizer is like $300 because there's a lot of R&D involved. You have obviously the video out of both screens. You have a potential controller input. There's just so much that goes on into it, and it's a big custom PCB. So not only are they expensive, but there's also a lot of research and development. And it, it, again, the, the, in terms of cost, it's just really expensive to do so. Uh, I, I will be playing with this. Um, and potentially potentially being able to output the bottom screen. I do want to play with this because I think this is an amazing mod and I might try and output a bottom screen to either another one elsewhere or a similar system. Um, another downside a lot of people have is this is the native resolution. It does output RCA and it outputs the native resolution of the console. So it doesn't look the best on larger screens. Now me personally, I don't have an issue with that. I don't mind the way it looks on a bigger screen because it's not meant to look good. It's a DS. It's it's not meant to look that good. Uh, but that's another thing consoleizers do is I think they built in upscalers into their boards, which in my personal opinion, I think it's dumb. I think rather than installing an upscaler onto this guy, you'd be better off installing an upscaler on this end and then upscaling whatever you connect, like connect this to an upscaler rather than build a, an upscaler into it. But those upscalers right now are kind of costly. Like a quality one is upwards of $100. So if you really wanted to make this better quality, you could uh, buy an HDMI or an RCA upscaler for making it look better. I don't personally think it's worth it, but it is an option as well. But anyways, let me stop ranting here for a minute. Um, the other option I was thinking of is this is really annoying, right? Because you have to hold it and it, it gets awkward and big. But in theory, if we could get rid of this, it'd be helpful. And there have been a couple of theorized ways to do it. You could actually put a receiver on this end and a sender on this end and transmit it over like a wireless display. I've heard it theorized. Um, I don't know if anyone actually did it, but that's an option. But my personal opinion, what I'd like to begin working towards is potentially a USB output here and a USB output here. So what it is, is rather than putting this to a ribbon cable, you take those ribbon cable inputs, wire them to a USB, and then you wire these same inputs to another USB, and then all you have is a USB cable, 
And then you can have your box back here, your console here, and all you have to do is deal with that USB cable. And then you can literally put it out of sight with like a decent USB-C cable. Um, I know this idea comes from Digugu Mods. Um, so he has the, he uses the resistor boards and he actually sells pre-made resistor boards for people to install. But his most recent mod actually took the resistor board, outputted the resistor board to USB-C as well as wiring power to USB-C. So that is actually, let me see if I have one of those again. I'm, I'm ranting here, but it's for good reason. Where I had one the other day. Put it in here. These ones are in there. I'll just go this one for now. I figured I'd add it into the video anyways. Uh, it, his resistor boards are something like this. This is a really crude version. Uh, it's not... I don't think this one's currently functioning. It's a two-sided board with a resistor array. This is essentially a cheaper version of this guy. Uh, this one's actually really cheap with the amount of resistors and boards it takes, but by the time you buy them, it's still upward because you can't just buy one resistor cost effectively so you buy a bunch of resistors a bunch of boards and stuff and then you just have a bunch of extra prototypes but as i was saying digugu took a version of this resistor board that he made and he outputted it to um, USB C, and this only uses i think six wires which is why when you use one of these you don't get a very good video output because you're having I, i'm i don't know if it's because you do, you use incomplete video or if it's because you're outputting a digital to analog, because the DS uses digital video. So this is actually just a digital to analog converter that it's outputting to. I think it's a mix of the two. I think it's a mix of not having a complete video stream because you're only using six wires, as well as the fact that it's not converting to digital to analog. So it's just outputting digital over an analog stream, which gives you a really bad video quality. Um, but for some things, it's OK. Um, again, you. It, it looks like there's screen striations on the screen when you have one of these attached, which is why I don't personally like it. But I think using Digugu's findings of wiring it out to USB-C could potentially be useful to adapting this guy to a USB input rather than a ribbon cable. And the other thing that does is one of Digugu's other finds that's pretty interesting is he found a way to turn the custom firmware on and off. So one of the big issues right now with the custom firmware is if you keep the top screen connected, the top screen will yellow from the custom firmware. Presumably, um, my guess is actually power related um, because it enables the other four pins and there's power across those other pins. The rest of them aren't able to get as much power because you're powering this guy and you have a power draw. Well, you're not actually powering this guy, but you're enabling more pins than it used to have. But anyways, I, I digress. So because he figured out how to turn the firmware on and off, you can actually preserve the top screen. So what he's done is you have a USB output preserving the top screen because you wire these to the individual points where they're connected rather than through the ribbon cable. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to go in that direction with the big time mod. So do you, if you watch this, hit me up. I, I love to listen about your findings and how you managed to do that because I'd love to apply it to this whole unit. That's my end goal. Uh, maybe a controller input, maybe eventually making this USB. But overall, there's a lot of cool stuff you can continue doing with this mod. I really like this idea. When it comes to modding, I think it's a really fun concept. I'm actually thinking about selling these guys for this is like $35 to produce. You got $5 in filament, a dollar, a dollar for a shipping thing. I'm thinking about selling them for maybe like $75 to $80, but I'm not sure if it'd be worth it. It really depends on how many people would want these. So if you want one, let me know and I'll, I might produce a few to sell them to output the video like I know it's going to be beneficial for shiny hunting and a couple other things or maybe you can wait and see where the future takes this mod but yeah 
this is, one, this is a longer form video. I've been making shorts on this, but I finally built the thing. So I figured I'd make a longer form video just discussing it and talking about it. But I think that's the end of it, really, this time. I think I covered everything, so. I really hope the audio quality on this is okay. Uh, let me look at my notes. I'm pretty sure that's everything. So let me know what you think about this mod. Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's a good mod, bad mod? Think, would you use it personally or would you stick to a, a cheaper or better alternative? Let me know down below. Anyways, this is Professor Merrill. We're done talking about this now. I'll see you all in the next video.